Good morning, happy Bowtie Friday. Today we're going to do a speed run through building a wallet module. So uh, for sure here be dragons. Like in the modules section, this is, uh, this is kind of like a prototype of a prototyping tool. The modules don't work that great and we'll ha have to hook up our inputs a couple times. It's, it's, uh, it's a little shaky. But we're going to make us a module for, see, see how when you click into that? Oh man. When you click into the module, basically we're going to make this, right? See how it's module now and I can click in and out. All right, let's go ahead and set it up as a wallet. We just, we find ourselves um, kind of using the same transactions, using the same faucet, using the same chain selector. Let's put it all into a wallet. So it all starts with that private key, right? So we'll set up an input from our module that is a private key. Okay, now we should get an address out of that, right? And so let's set up an output that is our address. Oops. Actually, before we even do that, you know what? I wanna create an output that is our blockchain. So we'll set this up first. Like it probably, we should have started with a chain and then a private key. Uh, this is fine. Okay, and then, so this will be Okay, cool. So we need a chain selector and we'll hook that up to our blockchain and then that will go out as blockchain. So then if we are say on a test net, it will be reflected kind of out here. Oh, look at that. We can already see things getting disconnected. Really cool, really cool. So like if I reload here, how many things are actually gonna still be connected? Hey, hey they're still connected, cool. All right, here we go, output. And this will be the address. Okay, now we're making progress. And if I reload, let's see what that wallet's looking like. Oh, oh, this guy got disconnected. <laughs> Wait, so is it like every time I hook up an output, the inputs get disconnected? Okay, whatever. Let's keep keep moving. All right, so once we get a private key in, let's test that out by, we'll just throw a hash of uh, Alice in. We should, oh, going to get another reload test. We should get an address out. Uh, look at that. Things stayed hooked up. Okay. And we've got our blockchain if we wanted to know that we were on the test network. All right, so what is next? We need to probably check Alice's balance or whoever is hooked up to this wallet, right? So we'll just set up a little timer system. What comes out of that is going to be uh, in way. So we'll go from way. Cool, cool, cool. Boom, boom, boom. There. So now we should have Alice's balance in way. Oh, we've got to put a, plug our address in. There we go. That's what was missing. And there we go. So there's her balance. Uh, let's go ahead and put that as an output. Awesome. Okay, now testing the theory here. If I get out of here and I reload, are my inputs disconnected again? They sure are. <laughs> Okay, so now we've got our balance going to this outside. All right, cool. So we know we know what chain we're on. We know what our address is. We know what our balance is. Uh, let's let's set it up so we have a faucet in case we don't have funds. So if this was like Erin, she wouldn't have any funds, right? So what she needs is our faucet. Oops, our test faucet with. Her address in there and a button so anytime anyone wants they can kind of like come up to this faucet and hit go and they should get some funds in their wallet and that shows up here cool so now we've got your balance we've got a faucet to get more from the test net probably we want to get our balance in whatever the current price is so the current price of ETH is 125 so we multiply our balance by the current price, we're going to get a dollar output, right? So if this test net was real ETH, Aaron would have now a dollar 25, right? And we can output that as like your USD value, maybe something like that. And now that we've put that output in there, our inputs are going to fall apart, uh, of course. So maybe just go, go get that out of the way. <laughs> 
<laughs> maybe maybe I just do let's do like a speed run and build the rest of it. Okay, so so what we've got now is this nice kind of account abstraction where Aaron uh, uh, has a wallet that uh, she can basically get her address, get her uh, we could even do dollars right here. She can see her balance. Uh, now what's what's like the next thing? Uh, she's probably going to want to be able to send, right? So let's uh, get a transaction block going and we'll plug in the blockchain and we'll plug in whatever private key we have. Then we can kind of just, so these inputs are gonna come detached a bunch, so let's just get them set up so it's easy to <laughs> rewire them every time. Uh, okay, so we got our two address. And, and the reason why I'm building this module and kind of going through the, the, the junk of having to rehook these up is to get like, once we have like a module over here that is wallet, we can use it here repeatedly and hopefully the, the things will stay connected once we get it solid. Uh, but the whole point would be like, let's, let's then like have a component that re represents this thing. Let's write it into code, sort of like, let's make it, let's prototype it with a module and let's write it into code once, once we're ready. So uh, we're, we're just kind of, kind of prototyping what this might look like. All right, so um, like for instance, value, right? Do we want that in way? Do we want that? I think what we'll, what we'll do is we'll take the value in on the outside as ETH and we'll convert it to way, right? I think that makes the most sense. So if we hook that up here and that up here, then we set this to value. Okay, there we go. And my guess is that's all just gonna totally come detached when we uh, reload. Two, two, two. Just this, just private key. Just private keys coming detached every time. Okay, whatever. All right. Now we need some data. Okay, this will be another input, and I could technically go like two hex here, but I think there's going to be some times when we're going to have the data already in hex format. So I think we're going to expect the data in hex format. Okay. Uh, for gas limit, we'll we'll actually bring in our own kind of default value of what maybe like 2600 or 26,000 right we'll talk about gas later but uh, this that's just enough to basically sign a small transaction with maybe a little bit of data in it and this will be gas limit right we want to expose that out there and if someone happens to set the gas limit how's it looking out here oh yeah coming together right coming together let's just go ahead and uh, reattach things just for fun. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh, interesting. So private key is good, but <laughs> oh man, ah, I, I don't even know what the pattern is of this thing breaking. I don't even understand it. Okay, so for gas price, we're going to use uh, an API and we're going to say we want it to happen fast with like a small multiplier there of like 1.0001 to be like that guy in the okay and that needs to go to Gway. right right isn't it nice to have all these little things just built into your wallet so then you don't even have to think about it all right the non i'm just gonna have it look it up every time so technically we could only send one transaction per block but if you wanted to send a whole bunch of transactions in one block you could just increment the nonce and sign a bunch and send them off but in this case we don't really need to worry about that all right now we can send transactions, right? And uh, yeah, we'll need to keep an eye on these inputs. Let's just go ahead and uh, like just save that guy, right? And maybe maybe do a reload and see all what's disconnected. See how stable we are. Oh man, two data gas limit. <laughs> oh man. Okay, but now it's there, right? Like it stays, without without messing with anything, it stays connected. Yeah, it does. Okay, so something with the way I'm messing with the inputs is causing inputs to break. So as we add new things, we'll have to like do that reload dance. Okay, uh, now we can sign a transaction to someone and uh, it will come out as signed. So what we need to do is then take the signed transaction and send it. And then once we send it, we're going to get a transaction hash and we will ask for the transaction and the receipt just kind of speed running through this let's see we want probably one button hooked up to that we'll hook it up to both of these and then we'll put a timer on it so we're just like constantly asking for the uh, transaction and the receipt 
And what is next? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to trick this thing to, uh, I can't do inputs into modules either. So I'll need that. And we'll also have, I think that's everything. We'll want to output this stuff. Oh, and there's one last thing is, is this contract, this idea of this contract address, which uh, we will get, we will do. Okay, so let's see. Um, we kind of want to test this. I want to send this out. Okay, so let's see. We want to do this. We'll, we'll create another input and break everything. So really, I should I should quit reloading and breaking things and then fixing them. I should just do one like big iteration and then just be done with it, right? Okay, and then just do it like rehook it up one more time. Okay, here we go. Input is going to be this is going to be called send, right? And send is going to be buffered with this storage memory, and then we're going to check a condition. All of this is just a hack to watch for it to change. Ooh, whoops. Oh man, there we go. Okay, so anytime that changes, it will trigger this button and trigger this whole thing to send out a transaction. And let's just get some more, let's see, outputs here. Uh, we'll set one up for the TX. And we'll set one up for the receipt. Okay, now we'll, we'll have one more output, which is going to be like the contract address. Uh, man, it's probably best to just do that. No, no, no. It, even if we have to break things and hook things back up, let's, let's iterate here. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to test this. We want to be able to send some stuff out. So uh, let's create another account real quick. Uh, this will be some text. This will be Bob going into a hash function to create a private key to create this address. And that will be our two. That's who we'll send to. OK. And then we'll need a value, which will be a number ex expressed in ETH, right? So uh, Aaron's balance is that. So we'll send 0.001. So then we have a data field we'll leave empty, gas limit we'll leave empty. All right, last thing I want to do is just try this button out. And I think the first time I hook it up, it will... Okay, something failed there with the gas limit. What was that? Okay, base fee exceeds gas limit. Okay, so we've got something going on with this right here. This needs to be set up. Uh, what did we say? 26,000? All right, so now we just have, since I didn't specify gas limit, all right, there we go. We can see stuff change. We can even probably get the receipt from the transaction and see what happened. Cool. We are transacting now, right? Aaron is sending, sending money to Bob. Cool. Cool. Okay. Good job, wallet. You're working. All right. Uh, the last thing is if... Aaron deploys a contract here, then we're going to want to get the address. It's, it's something that you derive, and here's how. <laughs> so we will take the, uh, the nonce that comes out of the transaction. So we will need a property of nonce. Ooh, hey, come on. Coming out of this transaction. Right, is the nonce in here? Uh, yeah, no, no, we'll just get it right there. So the nonce is two, okay? So what you do is you R <laughs> RLP encode the, uh, the address and the nonce. So we need, let's just drag this guy way up here. We need this guy's address, all right? So we have our address and our nonce of our last transaction into RLP encode, then we hash that then we uh oh looks like we, we're doing a substring so what do we get out of that we get this okay so i think we need to grab the address from that right so we'll do a substring where we start at 26 
and we take in this and look what we get out that look at that so now we need to put a zero x on that so let's bring in a combine uh, let's throw some text here we are in the in the thick of it here we're gonna add a zero x to this address oh whoops wrong way put that put that there and that there and we should get an address right ta-da okay so if that transaction would have been a contract being deployed that contract would have been deployed to this address and that means we can set one more output that is going to be called contract and it will be the contract it will be basically the derived address that you would get if you deployed a contract so then if we ever do a contract deployment it'll be there so now everything's going to be broken when i reload we're going to reload one to one last time now that we're not hooking up any more inputs and outputs and hopefully this guy will stay stable to address wire the data back up make sure our gas limit is set Looking good, looking good. Wait, this guy got disconnected from one of them. Tricky, tricky. And our output is good, our output is good, our output is good. I think that might be it. Okay, can I reload now? Am I safe? Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're stay. Oh, <laughs> this got disconnected. Oh man, I, I cannot even figure out the pattern of what is breaking here. Something ridiculous. All right, let's try one more time. If I get out of here and I reload, tell me we are stable. Yes, 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 those two. Okay, don't touch anything. We have a working <laughs> wallet module. All right, I'm going to take this module and I'm going to save it and it will be down here in the module. So you can just grab wallet and drop it in and have what I've built here. And this will allow you to, we can send funds, right, with the click of a button. Uh, we can get the derived contract address that would be deployed if you happen to push code into the data field. This, this is basically your wallet ready to go, and we can drop those in and use those for a bunch of other things. Woo! Thank you for coming on this journey with me. Happy Bowtie Friday the 13th. Uh, we built us, we went on a side quest to build a wallet module, and boy, we were in the trenches. Happy Friday.